for Friday. This is FSA, uh, should be recorded, got it. Um, today we have um, Sylvie, and Sylvia is from um, Colombia. It's a pleasure to have her. If you remember back not too long ago, um, she was showing her artwork on Yupo paper, and it was quite, uh, I thought it was very beautiful, very, very colorful. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be interesting to watch Sylvie, Sylvia today. Um, today, I and many of the brand ambassadors are in uh, Bologna, Italy. And here in Bologna, Italy, it is uh, 7.30. It's about 60 degrees outside. So um, still kind of nice. Um, not too long ago, like three or four days ago, five days ago, I heard they had 30 degree weather. So it's like Seattle can change on a moment's notice. But right now it's very nice. Um, Sylvia, it's great to have you in the, in the studio today. Hello, John, and thank you for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to be here and share with all of you uh, our love for this, uh, for Daniel Smith and for watercolor. Uh, there's only one thing that I want to know, what, that I want to tell you. I am from Costa Rica, not from Colombia. Oh, I said, I'm sorry, <laughs> Costa Rica. <laughs> They're, beautiful Costa, they're both beautiful, beautiful Costa Rica. <laughs> okay, so um, today, um, somebody will show us her artwork. Okay. And are we going to see a slideshow, Ethel? Yes, I'm ready for that. Awesome. Okay. We'll do I it think now. you'll actually see the work. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so for our friends um, here in Zoom and Facebook, in case you have not followed Sylvia um, in her social media accounts, this is her handle in Instagram, her, her name, her first name, Sylvia Mong. How do you pronounce your last name, Sylvia? Monge. Monge there. Sylvia dot Monge that. And, 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 the, and the other last name is from, from my mother is from Barcelona, so it's Catalonian and it's, it's pronounced Puch. Oh my God, I got it wrong. Puch. <laughs> so we better remember that. Sylvia, that monje, that Puch. There. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Sylvia. Yeah. And then, of course, she also, she's also in Facebook. And I think you're familiar, Sylvia. The next couple of slides will be your artworks, and we'd love to hear a line or two about each of the artworks here. We start with this. Oh, gosh. Uh, okay, but well, uh, I wow. have been watercolor for a long time. And I, in these days, I received some wash colors from Daniel Smith, and I was so happy and so excited about it. But today I want to, to talk a little bit about the wash, but I wanted to show you first my watercolors and then I will show you my tries in wash. I'm, I'm getting to, I'm just learning how to use the, the material, but it's amazing. So this is one of my watercolors. The next, okay, this is, Another one with a, a little bit of the granulation from the ultramarine blue. The next one. Okay, th this was my first try with the wash. I think it has a lot of mistakes, but trying is the only way to, to learn. <laughs> uh, I was trying to paint like the watercolor, but the, col the colors are much more opaque. So, um, but, but I think it was, it was good to, to try. Okay, the next one. This, these are my landscapes in watercolor. I like to paint a little bit more abstract or more the, the the shapes and the colors and not really the every detail. The next one. Okay, this was last year, I went to visit my daughter and she took me to a sunflower field. 
and it was so nice. I, I love the way it looks that you can see only like yellow everywhere. But then when you get closer, you can see the shapes of the sunflowers. So that's what I tried to do in this one. The next one, this is, these are more or less the, the way I paint my, my landscapes. I have a, a nice park just across the street from my house. And I like to walk in there. And, and this is how I feel when I go. Okay, the next one. This was my second try with the wash. Uh, and, and with this one, I feel much better because I think some of the colors, they look uh, opaque. But then I, I, I feel like I could get some even transparent if I put more water. And, and I like that. I use also some of the sticks, the watercolor sticks that are, I think I, they are great. Okay, the next one. Okay, here's when I received the, the colors at the beginning, I didn't know how they work. So I did this for myself. It's like my notebook that I want to share with you. Uh, and, and, and I use some of the wash, you know, using more water or less water. And, and maybe in, in the second flower, I, I put water in the middle, but then in the, in the other it was more opaque. But I think if you, if you are trying, if you try this wash that it's really amazing, it, I think you should do this because it, it's it's a way that where you can see what what you can get with the with the materials. Okay, next one. See, in in here it was the same, trying different colors, uh, the combinations, how how they will look together with what with more water or less water, and and this is what I got. Okay, the next one. With the greens, it was the same. With all of the all of them it was the same. It's it's more like to try, to try and see what happens if I put there or the uh, the only thing I used uh, was the the watercolor stick, and the, the the others are a wash. The next one. With this, it was the same. I used I used the the watercolor sticks, and then the if you can see some like the like the leaves, they look more opaque. I use less water in there, and the other ones are more with more water. The next one. With this, I tried to see. I I put watercolor the. Quinacridone rose watercolor, and I put the gold shower over it to see the, the wash over it, uh, not, not straight from the tube with, with a little bit of water. But even you can see there how, how opaque and, and how it covers the, what it's uh, in the first layer. So, I just wanted to, to share with you my notebook where I put all the things. And if you have any question, just ask me. Okay, that was very nice. So Sylvia, they can, the viewers can ask you questions as you're doing your artwork? Yes, sure. Okay, excellent. Okay. okay. Let me see what you can see. There. And I will do more like a, play a little bit with the colors so you can see how they work. Okay. Okay, let me do some of the colors.
everybody should try this wash because I know you will love it. Okay, this is a, a brush from Michael Solomon, which is very nice, I, I really like it. So is your paper hot pressed or cold pressed? It is hot pressed. I, I love to work without texture better than the other one. Thank you. You see these beautiful colors, how opaque they are. With this one, I'm putting more water. Is your board flat? Are, are you working on a flat surface or are you slightly angled? It's a little confusing for me. I know, I'm sorry. I couldn't put better the camera, but it's, it's I'm working flat. Thanks very much. <laughs> have a reference photo? Uh, uh, what? No. No, I'm just oh, okay. with the, I'm just playing with the colors. Okay. Like John said, spring. <laughs> Sylvia, for today's yeah. colors, are you going to use all your um, gouache tubes or gouache colors on the table? The ones I have on the table, yes. Yes, okay. Because we have, yeah, our friends here asking for the names of the colors that we will use today. Okay, great. I'm using the Pirol Scarlet. The Pirol, you say Pirol? Pirol. Is it correct? Okay. The Pirol Orange, Quinacridone Magenta. Uh, wisteria, lavender, uh, King's Royal Blue, Ultramarine, and Black. Those are the colors. Okay, now I'm going to put only water. So what size is your brush? <laughs> this, this is so old that, that the I- The number's I off. <laughs> <laughs> it's from Scola, but I have, I had it for, for many years and, and I think I use every day. So I don't know really the size.
another thing that I like about this uh, wash is that you can go over it uh, after they dry and it, because it covers more. Okay, I will I will use some of the some of the sticks that I really like. John, we have a yes. question from Carol here in Zoom about our gua about gouache. Whether does it granulate or does it not granulate? So it's it's a water media using the same pigment and the same binder as the water color. So if you use mass tone, and I think that's in some of the instances that's what um, was being mentioned by Sylvia, then you won't get granulation. But if you add water, <clears throat> um, you can get granulation. It just depends like everything else when it comes to water, water color, even though it's a water media, it's how much water do you, how much water will you use? I think that's one of the things that we have to learn. Yes. It is definitely a learning exercise. That's your question. There was a question earlier, and I would also like to know the name of that brush that you're using. I know you said earlier, but I we didn't catch some of us didn't catch it. This one? Yeah. These are from Michael Solovjev. He's also a, a brand ambassador from Daniel Smith. Thank you. You're welcome. We have a question on Facebook asking if you, you are painting wet on wet. Yes. <laughs> no, it wasn't dry, but with a lot of water. Thank you. But see when when you well I will show you later <laughs> in a in a better position the, the watercolor the, the the painting but you will see how 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 it works sometimes like a watercolor but sometimes you can back get other effects. So. One of the questions was, can you get the similar effect with water colors? Um, if you used, simple simple is to say no, because even if you look at the um, quinacridones as a gouache, they're not gonna look the same in mass tone as the quinacridones in a water color. Um, the pigment load is just, just not the same between the two, especially since the, the gouache is going to um, be a very opaque right at the start and a, a, a um, matte opaque at that. Uh, can you, I, I didn't understand the question. Oh, the question was, can you get the same effect from a watercolor as from a gouache? And they're really two different animals. Um, so 
if you're looking at them from mass tone, even at mass tone, which is right out of the tube, mass tone, they would be dissimilar. Yes, they, they are. They can be similar, but but even the, the wash is more opaque. Okay, this is this is one thing that I really let me see like to use. This is is watercolor with water, but on this. Oh, that's cool. This kind of bottles. Mm -hmm. And it's very nice to do, you know, some details. I, I like to draw, so. So what do you call that tool? This is called a fine line applicator. Fine, fine line applicator. Yes. That's very cool. Yes. And I think it's nice that you can do some Okay, now it's a little bit. I will put some. I just searched that on Amazon, fine line applicator bottles, and there's a nice selection. Yes. So we can all access it. <laughs> I'm sure you will like them because it's very nice to, you can do very thin lines with those. And do you put any color or watercolor in the applicator, Sylvia? Or yes, yes, I use that with the. Well, this one has black, lamp black, but you can use with the, any color. And it's nice because you can, you can do it in if the paper is. It's like for example here, the paper was dry, so the line is very thin, but then when it gets to the wet part it diffuses. I will show you the painting. Let me see if I can do it so you can see it in the correct way. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Gorgeous. That's lots of fun. Thank you. It's, I really, want to encourage everybody to to use this uh, to 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 use these wash colors because they are really beautiful and and I think I will I will use them more like for complement for the watercolors but also in in here for example I just use the wash And John was telling me that you are having new colors now, right? Yeah, in um, November, we'll have a total of 44 additional 
uh, gouache colors. So we'll have 66. Okay, I'm going to take out the, the tape. Okay, for me, this is finished. I think that's fantastic. I've been taking botanical illustration and in the book, some woman did a cabbage and it took her 130 hours. So Ooh. that's 13, <laughs> 10 hour days for a cabbage. And I thought, you know, <laughs> I don't really think that's how I want to spend my two weeks, but that's up to you. <laughs> Yes, I usually I, I usually like very well with this one. I wanted to show a little bit a more like playing with the colors so you can see more what happened with more water and things like that. But I usually think very quickly, very fast, you say. Because uh, I like about watercolor that is very spontaneous. So there's a question about the painting that's uh, behind you, is that gouache or is that watercolor? No, that's watercolor. That's watercolor. Yes. We're talking it's about a, earlier, and the quinacridone is it quinacridone rose, right, or red? Quinacridone. I I really love those uh, all the quinacridone colors because they are very transparent. And, and and also the the greens that you have. I use I use the the gold green and the appetite green for that. Very nice. Very nice. I don't know if you have any any questions or 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 if you have some experience with the wash that you can share that you want to share. So the greens that so we use with the, the um, green app the green appetite genuine and the yes. green gold. Yes, I love those too. But you have uh, very nice uh, different greens also. Yes, those are the ones I use the most. And and Costa Rica, we consider it a, a green country <laughs> because yeah. everywhere the look is green. Yeah. Have you ever tried the jade knife? No, no, that one I haven't never tried. Yeah, like I would one. love to. Yeah. Oh, I would try. Yes, and and, and usually and that's such a bright painting that you did. Uh, let me see if Your I painting can... is so bright. I'm looking at it to the to the right. It's very nice. <laughs> she has more around around her, John. Um, she's oh. now in her studio. Let me see if I can show you. Okay. It was... And while there it is. Oh, very nice. I will show you some. I... Oh, thank you. I don't know if you can see. Okay, yeah. you, you saw some of this, right? Mm -hmm. I have this. I have this. In, I put this in here. Let me see, like this. This thing, so I can put all the watercolors that I paint. <laughs> I have also this. With this one, I put some with that the same bottle, the applicator. Uh, I put some masking fluid first to do all these lines. And then I start painting. So when you paint something that's more realistic, like the ships, do you um, draw first or you just go hell for leather and just do it? <laughs> <laughs> no. I I don't I don't draw too much, but I but I do a little some lines. Sure, yes. yeah. I I do some lines some lines before I start to paint. 
but usually uh, not much because I, I don't I don't paint too realistic so I don't need too much details it's more like about shapes and and colors very nice Sylvia yes um I'm noting on your various paintings that we can see do do you have a very minimal palette when you're doing each individual painting and keep the amount of colors you're putting on very simple yes i don't use that many colors uh, i try to to use a, a just a, i don't know six or seven mm. in each painting you do tend to get an awful lot of color in it because of the natural bleeding of the paint onto one another but it, it's good it, it shows like a nice structure when you have a limited palette. Yes, I think it's it's good because if not, well, in some things you need a lot of colors. <laughs> Sometimes it depends on what you're painting, but but I think it's good to have just a few a few colors. You're right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So do you, do you use masking fluid? Just kidding. Yes. Yes, uh, in, in that painting that I show you with the boats, yes, I, I put the masking fluid first in a, in a random way. I just went like this and then I started painting. But sometimes I use for small details, but not, not too much. Okay. The applicator that you used is that's, that's a tool that generally gets used for masking fluid. For doing fine detail. Uh, yes, I, I bought it. I will show you the one was <laughs> like this. Uh, let me see all this stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. Fine line applicator. Mm -hmm. I put it near me because I always forget the name. <laughs> You literally can draw with that, uh, with your masking fluid. Yes, uh, I draw before and then I start, I started to paint. And, and, but I like to use just in a few details because sometimes it gets too, too, too straight the lines and I like about watercolor that the color mix together and if the line is too straight i don't really like it so do you, sorry do you, do you water down the masking fluid or use it full strength uh, no i use like the way it comes full strength mm -hmm. and do you normally do color studies i saw you did a lot of uh, color studies with the gouache is that normally something that you would do a color study before you paint uh, no, no, I, I don't do it before I paint. Well, in my mind, in my mind, probably, I already have the, the, the colors that I'm going to use, but not, not, I, I don't use, uh, do a study before. And we have a question on Facebook from Medba asking, uh, which one is your favorite color? Uh, my favorite color from from Daniel Smith watercolors, I think would be the quinacridone gold. It's it's a color that I really like because uh, if I can put it by itself, but even if I mix with other colors, it's great color. But you know, it's a difficult question because <laughs> many of them are so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love ultramarine and I love the quinacridone mm -hmm. rose and the reds. And... What's your favorite subject to paint? My favorite what? Subject. subject. Ah, subject. Uh, I love nature. So I, I really like flowers a lot because mm -hmm. you can play with the colors and with the shapes and you know the the, the darks and the light but 
also I like landscapes. And, and one of my favorite subjects is roosters. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I can go over to Ethel's and do a portrait uh, chicken, or whatever it's called. <laughs> the rooster has not made a sound yet. <laughs> yes, I love, I like roosters a lot because even I can paint them in any color and do a lot of things with them, with the movement and the shapes and everything. Is, is there a particular flower that you find more challenging than other flowers? Uh, well, I think that the, the flowers that I find very challenging are like the birds of paradise or these mm. flowers that are more like uh, the shapes. It's it's hard not to get, it, it's hard to, to do them without getting a, a two strong lines. No, how do you say it? Two straight lines. Uh, so I think they are very difficult to, to work with. Flowers are very tough to get right, aren't they? Uh -huh, yes. So, Sylvia, I have a question for you. Yes. I'm curious for you. How do you maintain motivation as an artist, not just for a short amount of time, but for decades at a time? How do you maintain the motivation? Thanks. Uh, well, I think now watercolor is in a, in a, a great time for watercolor to 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 be motivated because there are so many watercolor festivals all over the world and and a great many people is even in Costa Rica many people is trying to paint watercolor right now i have been painting i don't know 40 years or i don't know for how long and and it's something that I really want to every day. I, I, I don't know. I never lost the motivation to do it. Because it's something that I do because I like, because I enjoy. And, and I used to paint for myself. Uh, but many times I, I, I have exhibitions and go to festivals and things like that, but mainly it's, it's something that I enjoy. So if you were with us, there was a question about do you paint a contemporary way. If you were with us probably two months ago, you would have seen uh, Sylvia paint on um, Yupo, very beautiful, very Thanks. flowing, very more abstract, um, just gorgeous. So pretty much you do many different types, don't you, Sylvia? Yes, I like to try new things and, and, and uh, well, other thing is that I, I work in different medias and I, I work with also with ceramics and with glass and with mosaics mm -hmm. and acrylic. So I do something every day, <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but you know, even I work, the, like the one I have behind me is acrylic on canvas, but even I work in different medias, I consider myself a watercolor artist. Because even the, the glass, the, the way I work it is because I like it because it has the, the transparent part of the watercolors and, and I think they're kind of family in that matter. Sylvia, uh, yes? the painting in the background, the big red yes. one, it yes. reminds me of um, uh, ceramic style that they use is it called tube lining it's, where they, they, they put a little tube of ceramic and then they inject color directly into it so it wells into the color wells into it in, I, I, you come across that i don't really understand i'm sorry on, on, a, on a ceramic vase, they raise the, uh, the outer edge of the shape and then they pour colour into it, it's called tube lining. Ah, uh, no, I, I have never done that. 
But it, it looks very much like that. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. So, Sylvia, so, there's two questions being asked. One is, can you please explain how you achieve the holes on Yupa with the candle? You mentioned it in the last Zoom. Okay. Yes, the, the, I just put the, the candle and, and Yupo over it, not very close. And then the, the holes begins to, you know, the, the hole it begins to, to appear in the Yupo. Okay. And then, oh, let's see. Um, what you are a great artist, how, how you choose each day what to paint and what watercolor or do in class? I guess, uh, what's your motivation? What, <laughs> what's your motivation? You know, it, it, you never know really because it will. Usually when I travel, I come with a lot of things in my mind that I want to do because maybe I, I see new things, new landscapes, new uh, subjects that I want to, to learn. But it's, it, usually I like to do things that are uh, difficult to me so that, because I like challenges or to learn new things like with this wash that uh, for me, it has been like the first experience with that material. And I love that. I love to, to learn how to use different things. Um, uh, but the, I don't know, things you see, things you feel, man, many, and, and sometimes even things that you don't, you are not looking for something, but you see something and then you say, oh my God, I want to paint that. Awesome. Um, Dina mm -hmm. asked a question. It's, uh, does the gouache move on paper only when you move it with the brush as to the pay the watercolor moves due to its proximity? And, you know, the, the gouache by <laughs> nature can be mass tone. And if it's mass tone, it's not going to move the same way that you'd use a watercolor with water because the watercolor with water is, um, both interacting with the water and breaking surface tension or working with another watercolor as to which one has the most surface tension. And you don't have that with a gouache if you're using it at mass tone. Um, so it's kind of one of those things that, that uh, Sylvia has been talking about, which is it's really something to play with and to, and to see how it reacts in ways that are different to a watercolor, although the pigment and the binder are the same. And yes. we have a follow-up question on Facebook asking, uh, have you tried painting gouache on Yupo? It's on the mm -hmm. same subject. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm glad I have that question because it's a to do tomorrow. <laughs> I haven't tried yet. You're doing it tomorrow? Why would you put, <laughs> why would you put holes in your Yupo? It's it's because uh, you know, I, I didn't understand that. It's because in the Yupo, uh, before painting, I give I give shape with a with a with the heat, and and I I made some some holes, you know, just to give textures and things before painting. But is the paper burned then, or what? I mean. Yes. How can you paint then on burn burn paper? Oh, no, because okay. it, it it's white. It after the whole seat stays white. I would love to huh. to show you some of the details. Let me see if I can put this home. And I don't know if, if you can put this so I can show you. There you go. Okay. I, I Thank you. <laughs> see some of the effects that you can see in the in the wash. Here you can see with the with that a fine line applicator 
how the line, if it's dry, it stays very thin and with the water it changes completely. Are the black areas burned? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> So Yupo is a, is, a, is, a, is a plastic. Yupo is a plastic. Right. So, right. I know that. Yeah. Easy to burn into mold. Easier. Oh. So, mm -hmm. Sylvia, Sylvia, do you have a sample of one of the Yupos with the holes? Yeah, yes, I just I don't. Will. I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. See, see that the that even the the wash works in a little bit like watercolor when it has a more water, like for example in here. Very pretty. I love those lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me call my husband so he, he can bring me one of the jukebox so you understand. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm you. sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, that's a good question. That was a great <laughs> presentation. That was so quick and so colorful. Sylvia, while we're waiting for your husband to get the artwork to share, may I ask another question? <laughs> this is Anna Marie Stephenson again. And I was curious about how do you continue to maintain growth as a professional artist? So how do you uh, encourage growth when a lot of times I find teaching or writing or demonstrations hijack all of the time and energy often required for growth? and development as an artist. How do you balance that? Thanks. Uh, excuse me, how do I balance being an artist and? How do you maintain growth as an artist? What is growth? Growth, growing and, and developing. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. I think it's important as an artist, some artists, they, they do something and and they think okay now i know how to do this and they just stay in there but i think they will the only way to grow is to to try new things to to keep moving and moving i think that's the only way here i have the the jupo that i did last time and these are the holes i don't know if you can see them Yes, they're actual holes. I, I, I kind of, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it didn't burn the whole thing. <laughs> if you How did you see the become totally <laughs> melting? You see that, that it has some shape. They, I don't know if you can see. Mm, yeah, even the edges you did. Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay, this was like this. I think this was nice. one, that one for, from last time, right? Yep. <laughs> so Thank you. That, that's, that's stream, correct, Ethel? Yes. So if you want, like to see it, they're all, they're all streamed. You can actually yeah. watch uh, Sylvia do that. Excellent. I, I, I will try with Wash and let you know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Because I think it's even I, I haven't tried wash on canvas that I think it works good also. So Sylvia, this is Stephanie. Um, you you put the holes in there after you did the watercolor, after you put the watercolor on, or before? Before I okay, give before I give the I give the shape to the I give shape to the yupo and the holes before. But I will show you one that I did after. See oh, that they cool. get like they get like white around. Mm. Yeah, it makes a big difference. Yes, this this is after. But I think I like it better before. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Have you tried uh, putting wax on it and just dropping it on to the Yupo to make it even more 
water resistant? Just like. Okay. Have, have I tried what? Uh, dropping wax onto the UFO. Uh, no. uh, and that would create a, a really highly resistant area that you could get off it later. No, I haven't tried. What I have tried is soap. Soap, yeah. <laughs> soap in... Let me see if I have... No, no, I don't have here any sample that I can show you, but sometimes I just put the watercolor and then put a little bit of soap and, and, and it washes the watercolor a little bit so you can get a, a nice a texture. Yeah. So yeah. Sabi, can we see, can we see yeah. the artwork? Can we see the artwork one more time? And then Anna, you can ask the question. Yes, I will show you. I will show you here because I think the other, the other Camera is not working. Okay. <laughs> it's too wet. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's not a problem. I'm sorry. That's okay. But, uh, there was a lot, lot going on there. That was, it was really neat to see that you did that so quickly with so I'm, many different things. I'm not I'm not very good for with the technical part. It's <laughs> not a problem. Anna, you had a question. Miss Joanne on Facebook was asking, "What was used to burn holes in the UPO? What tool are you using to make the holes?" Thanks. A, a candle. A candle was used to do the holes. Okay. Excellent. John? Yes. Uh, would you be able to put up or can you tell me where to go to find out about the new um, sticks that are now available? Um, yeah, I'll send you the link for the sticks. Great. Yep, absolutely. Right, Ethel, can you, can you do that, please? Sure. Okay. All right. So, Sylvia. Thank you so much. That was that was wonderful to watch. Thank you for answering so many questions, um, especially about a product that you know many people are 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 starting to play with, etc. Thank you to your husband who I see going back and forth and and trying to stay out of the camera. So that's very sweet of him. <laughs> Sylvia, and, you've been very different from many of the artists we've seen before, and it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> and thank you everybody for watching. Um, it's it, well, hopefully I can see all of you someplace. I'm uh, seeing uh, uh, so many artists are here in Italy, in Bologna, Italy. So it's good to see um, all of them. Thank you, Buffy, if you're watching for hosting yesterday. That was wonderful. And Sylvia, I hope you do this again. It's, it's, it's wonderful to watch you each time. Uh, thank, so thank you. you. And, and, you know, thank you so much. You are uh, incredible with all of us, all the artists, and, and we feel like at home when we are uh, with you and with Catherine and, and it's so good that we can share some of the things that we're doing with some other artists from around the world. Fantastic. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you everybody. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I will post I will post the, the painting that I did when it's dry. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, John. Bye-bye.